Hey, what's going on, guys? I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, happy Sunday. It's uh, it's, it's pretty nice outside. I thought it was gonna rain today. I uh, I was kind of busy this week. I was trying to uh, buy clothes and things I needed for for the store, for uh, not for the store, but like for my job and things like that. Just buy some extra dress shirts and shoes and stuff. Anyway, let's get started on this video. So today I want to talk about an administration tools. Um, that you should not be familiar with as an administrator or as an admin if you're dealing with servers or if you're just dealing with Windows 7 or if you're just dealing with Microsoft in general with um, any of the operating systems like 7, 8, or 10. So I'm going to I'm gonna just do it on my actual computer. So basically you go to Control Panel, you go to Administration Tools. Some people might not, some people might not be familiar with this. Um, you go to component services. I'm gonna start with that one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to each one one by one. Just go over it, what it does, and how it works, and things like that. So we have our components. We have our computer. We are. We have our com applications, dcom applications. We have our uh, running processes. We have a distribution transaction coordinator. Um, we have event viewer and we have our services. So event viewer is, uh, I went over this before, basically allows you to, if your computer crashes for some reason or when you when you uh, have your computer on, you get these random error messages like, black, like blah, blah, blah is running in the background. You would check on event viewer through Windows logs, through application. If it is issue with your application, someone's trying to log into your computer, you'll check security, Windows logs. You have some issues with setup, you'll, you'll check this as well. Um, this is for Windows updates. Um, you have your system, you have issues with your system, it'll tell you here. Um, forward events, hardware events, Internet Explorer, key management service, media, media center. You have your services. Services are, are uh, services that run automatically on the computer. So like it could be anything from Adobe, Adobe Flash, uh, Adobe Acrobat. Um, these things start out manual, automatic, delay start, and all these other things. But what I really want to focus on is uh, the print print spooner, because a lot of people have issues with printers. So you right click on print spooner, you go to properties. And if you're if if you don't if you're having issues with your printer, it doesn't want to print. Normally, you would check the print spooner. You would see if it's if it's automatic. Sometimes it gets disabled. Sometimes it's done manually. Sometimes it's an automatic delay. If you have issues with your print printer, you check the print spooners. That's usually how you fix it. So I went over that now. Let me just close this out real quick. Component management is like when you right click on your computer, you go to management. So there's two ways to get here. You just you go to administration tools or you right click my computer and click manage. It's the same thing. It has task scheduler. You could schedule a task for a specific day, a specific hour, a specific minute. You have your event viewer again. You have your local share folders. Um, you have your local users and groups. You have your users that are that are created on the computer. You have, you have your guest user enable disable. You could right click on it, go to properties. You could create you could create a user and tell the user to change, cannot change password. User must change password the next login. Password never expires. Um, account is disabled, and then you can see what what member they are of. So you could put them as a member as an admin as a standard user, as a regular user, as a guest user, um, depending how you set it up. You right click on the actual area. You can create a new user, give them a password, give her a password, you click create. You could export a list. You could view a list, arrange icons, line up icons, groups. You could create a group here, create a new group. You create, you could add people to the group like if you want to add an admin here you can add another admin here give the person give the person admin rights if you're trying if someone's trying to download something and they're not an admin you could give them temporary admin rights by going here 
add that user by their name. Um, add the user by the name. Go to advanced tab. If, I, if it's in the uh, if it's in the domain, you know you go to location. You click on the location of the domain. You will search the user by the name, and you click find now, and then you would add the user to it, and give them temporary admin rights. So that's what that is. You have your performance. Um, you have your performance monitoring tools. This is to check the performance on the computer, to collect data, to collect reports. You have your device manager. Device manager is whenever you have issues with drivers, um, you have issues with your USB ports not working, your keyboard, your mouse is not working, you have drivers that are missing for a webcam, drivers that are missing for anything you plug in USB wise. Um, you plug in a Wi-Fi card for the first time. You, you put it on the actual motherboard for the first time. You have to update the drivers, download the drivers. Um, you install a graphics card. I have an NVIDIA GeForce G GTX 960. You have to update the drivers. Right-click update. Go to disable and install. Properties, drivers. You can roll back the drivers. If the drivers that you updated is not working correctly, you can roll it back. You could disable it. You could uninstall it. Um, you check here if you have any error messages on it. Um, for networking, you could check the networking here. You go to properties, um, you go to advanced tab, you can control the how the network card is how the network card or the network on the actual motherboard works. You control it here. Check the drivers, power management, allow the computer to turn off, turn off this device to save power. Your general tab, device is working correctly. Um, I have a virtual box because I have a virtual machine network card. If you have issues with your display and you have a GTX 960 or any AT&I or G GTX cards and you get only one display, you got to download the drivers, run an update here, and you, you have to enable the second monitor if you're trying to run monitors, two, two dual screen monitors. You have to download the drivers and you have to enable the second monitor by right clicking screen resolution detect and you just put the other you just add the second monitor to it or if not you enable it on Nvidia control panel or on AT&I control panel you have your storage disk management you have your partitions here you have a C drive and a system reserve drive you want to see what how many partitions you have just click the little folder icon down below. Go to click on computer. You see, there's only one partition here and one hard drive. You have one hard drive. You can create multiple hard drives, or rather, multiple partitions. And you can put a Windows Seven on one, Windows Eight on another, and Windows Ten on another. And you can run Windows Ten on one partition, run Windows Seven on another partition. Uh, run Windows XP or Vista on another partition. You can run multiple operating systems with one hard drive if you wanted to. You could explore the hard drive, open and mark partitions as, act as active, change the drive letter and path, shrink the volume, extend the volume, add mirror, delete the volume, properties. You, you want to you check now for error checking on the hard drive, defrag it. Back up the hard drive, check the hardware, check for sharing permissions. If you want to give share permissions for the C drive for someone, could return to previous version, run a disk cleanup to clean up the hard drive. We have our services, same thing as before. Services is whatever services you have running. Check the print spooner if it's not running correctly. That's what that is. Data sources, I'm not going to go over this. Event Viewer, we just went over this. ISCSI Initiator, I'm not going to run over, I'm not going to go over this. Uh, local Security Policy, I will go over this. Um, it's your policies, how you set up your policies for, for users on the computer or on a domain. You could enforce password history, maximum password age, minimum password age, minimum password length. Password age is how long the password is good for for a user. If it's good for 20 days, 10 days, 30 days, uh, 15 days. You go to properties, change it to whatever days you want. 
store passwords, account, account lockup duration. If you create one, don't create one. Account lockup threshold, reset account lockup after a certain amount of attempts of trying to log in. You have your policy, account login fence success. Explain tells you what it is. If you need it, if you don't know what it is, it tells you how to use it. Same thing for all these other ones. You can check here. You can enable, disable, security policies, Windows firewall, public key policy, software restriction policy, application, and all this other stuff. So, performance monitor. We went over that already. Print management. We did not go over this. It's for printers. It's if you want to add a printer, you add a printer here. We have our all our printers. We have all our drives. We have our print server, our local printers, drivers, forms, ports, printers, printers, deployed printers. Our printers are deployed at the moment. You want to add a printer as an admin logged in as your your. You're log you're you're going to you're going to an office and that user has no admin rights, but they don't want you to log out of their computer and you want to add a printer for them. You do print management, you add it for them. So you would go and type print management. Print management. You would hold the shift key. You right click, run as a different user, run as yourself as an admin on the on the domain. Then when you open it up, once it's opened up, you will go to the printer, you will right click, add a printer, and you will search for the network, you will add the printer and add it for that one user. If that, and you're not, you don't have to kick the user out, you could just log, you could just add it manually through print management without having to kick the user out. You have your services, you have your system configuration, which is MS config. If I type MS config, it's the same thing. MS config. Um, normal startup, diagnostics, diagnostic startup, selective startup. You have your boot. If you have other operating systems installed from different partitions, you could pick which one you want to boot from. You have your safe mode. You want to boot into safe mode. Restart the computer. Goes to safe mode. You could set it up here. The timeout number of processors you want to run, maximum memory you want to run on your computer, uh, boot login, no GUI boot, OS boot information, services, services that are running or stopped on your computer at the moment, you could disable all, enable all. Um, these are startup items to start up automatically on the computer. If you have a computer that has Skype installed, and you don't want Skype to in, to to start up when it when you first turn on the computer. You could uncheck it here. If you have uh, iTunes installed and iTunes starts automatically, you could uncheck it here. If you have MS Messenger, you could uncheck it here. If you have Facebook Messenger, you could uncheck it here. If you have anything running that starts up automatically, you could you could uncheck it here. You have your tools. If you're running, you want to run some tools. Event Viewer. Um, registry command prompt you can run it through here so this is another way of getting to the command prompt this is another way of getting to task manager and all this other stuff task scheduler we just went over that windows firewall you want to check the firewalls for if the firewall was attacked you could check it here you could block and enable specific things specific connections you could block here as well you create a rule, you could disable a rule, you could copy a rule, you could delete it, you could cut it, you could create a new rule, you could uh, check the properties of the rule, enable it, see where is it coming from, where is the program running from, computers, which computers are allowed to run through that port, if you have it connected to multiple servers, allow connections from these computers, skip this rule, for connections from these computers. You could do all that on the actual Windows firewall. Um, we have our Windows memory diagnostic. You have issues with your memory, you wanna check the memory. You restart now and check for problems. You check the problems next time when the computer turns on, it would check the memory if it has really, if it has bad, if it has, basically it checks the sectors of the memory, see if it's bad or good. 
you have your Windows PowerShell mo mode, which basically allows you to run PowerShell c commands if you're using a server. You could do it on actual on on your Windows Seven as well, but uh, I'm not I'm not really in tune with this. I'm not I'm not I know nothing about Windows PowerShell. Otherwise, I would um, do something here. AIP config, ping Google.com. Get four replies. Uh, system info. System info exe. That's to check the. That's to check the specs of your computer. System info exe. So you wanna you wanna know what the specs of your computer are. You you type system info exe, and it tells you when your computer was made, when was it built, um, when did you get the computer, when was the OS installed, um, and all this other good stuff. That's what that is. So I I did this in the my first video. I did the same thing on this on my first video. It says original install day seven eight two thousand fifteen. System boot time now is 7-10-2016. I turned it on on 6, 6.36.18 p.m. today. System manufacturer, MSI. It's a 64-bit. It's an Intel. It tells you how much memory it has. It has 16 gigs of RAM. It tells you all this hot fixes and all this other stuff. Tells you the network card, the tells you all this other stuff. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. That is what administration tools are, and that's how it works. Um, hope hope this video made somewhat sense. Um, <laughs> you guys have a good day. Rate, comment, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't like the video. My next videos will be on DHCP. DHCP lease, uh, DHCP lease time, reservations, um, DNS, uh, it will be all about configuring the server, um, adding a, adding a domain to the, creating a domain controller and all this other server stuff. And that's pretty much what's, what's the next videos are going to come and be about. And that's, that's what it is. Um, hope you guys have a good day and, um, you guys have a good one. Take care. Bye now.